so um i feel like there's um there's a space where there's a whole lot of wrestling fans maybe they ain't been getting represented that i'm starting to see you know what i'm Absolutely. saying you man definitely mm-hmm. building towards that so mm-hmm. you know i'm here for that as well well let's start this off welcome to a brand new episode of the kick out we got a special guest here today my name is skillet my name is max and we've got a man that I've always wanted. This is no joke. Like, this is actually no joke. I feel due to, I'm not going to say the power of COVID, because we all know COVID is a terrible thing. But due to the power of technology of the back of COVID, I think we've been able to connect with certain people that we've always wanted to connect. And for some reason, we just haven't been able to meet in a room together. We've all just been busy. This man has been hella busy doing his thing on the side. And phase what? This man here is he's, before I even talk about his obsession with wrestling and what he's doing in his own independent a hustle in the wrestling industry. Um, I knew I met this man as because obviously people know my background is from a music background as well. I was a rapper too. I, I still am a rapper, but not as much as I used to. And real recognizes real phase is I'm not I'm not just saying it because he's in the chat, but when I first heard phase rap, I was like, this guy has got it all. He's got the charisma, he's got the lyricism, and the gal love him. You know what I'm saying? He's going to be humble on that one, but the gal love him. And um, I remember I met FaZe a few times in a, in a party called Living Proof. We boxed up a few times in... Um, I remember I, I remember when the first times I met you, FaZe, we were in a club together in Dalston. Uh, yeah. Visions. We were in Visions together, and I was with MVP. And, and uh, that was a crazy night. But FaZe, thank you for joining us today, man. And f- welcome to the kickout. Thank you for joining us, bro. Yeah, man. Thanks for having me. Um... Yeah, I remember that night when I saw you in Visions, you spun my brain because <laughs> you don't expect to see MVP in Visions. No, no you know, so no, I, <laughs> I do the double take and, you know what I'm saying, caught me off guard. Um, I remember another time I was chatting, we were talking about King of the Ring, might have been yeah. like 3 a.m. somewhere. Yeah, in like a 100. smokers area. I don't even know where we was. I think it was you know, back. Um, I think it was, I think it was backstage at a proof still. I think it was. And yeah, we, I think we, it we probably was at yeah. a proof. And we'll talk about um, Owen, Owen and Brett. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I was saying Owen is like probably my favourite king in the ring. And I agree. Um, that and Austin. Owen and Austin, I think. Yeah, man. Austin yeah. was a, a huge, huge moment. Mm. Um, but yeah, man. Back to, talk, back to this wrestling stuff, bro. I've been waiting to come and I've got some stuff to get off my chest. 100%. Well, we're going to get to that. I, before we do get about how you're feeling about wrestling today and the climate of wrestling today, um, let's talk about your origins origins with wrestling. And and when was the first time you became a fan? When was the moment that you, you, you watched something wrestling related and you were like, yeah, no, nah, I'm hooked? Um, My first, first memories. Really, the, the, the main thing that really sticks me sticks with me was Mania 6, Hogan Warrior. Like the part, I remember seeing a poster and just thinking like, yo, like what, like, you know, like, what is this? Um, that's crazy, because and... that's actually my, that's my introduction to it too. That's Yeah, I just, got the, I just got the, the top, the long sleeve joint. Um, <laughs> but yeah, the, 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 what, the, that, that match specifically, it's not even a pay-per-view, it was that match specifically, that's probably like the first memory that's, indented in my brain um, absolutely absolutely you know warrior was my guy i got him tatted on me um and yeah that's what started the love of pe- that that's what started the love affairs like really my first love before music yeah yeah Mad. yeah I, I find there's an interesting bond between rappers and wrestling you know i feel like rappers i mean you've always had it in the 90s there was always references here and there but no one really owned up to the fact that they were wrestling fans i feel today with with griselda and Action Bronson and the likes of that, they are very open to, you know, I remember when Action Bronson released a song called Barry Horowitz. And you know what I mean? It's just like, this stuff for us, man, to understand and get. Um, uh, Max, did you ever feel like, you know, because I know you're into your music too. Like, did, did you ever have like uh, an affiliation with both music and, and wrestling as well? Yeah, there's there's definitely the crossover, like you're saying. I think it's the, maybe it's the performance element that obviously both, yeah people in both industries understand the show business of it all i guess um and even still like you hear today's rappers in like hip-hop music drill music in the uk that we enjoy as well they're still using references punchlines metaphors from you know taking things on wrestling and stuff like that so 
it's definitely you know a big kind of crossover area like you said uh, yeah I, that's I, a fact i feel, yeah, feel like that's a fact because um there's 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 one there's one element of it where you compare it in terms of showmanship and you know like cutting promos getting yourself over exactly yeah but then like now when i look at when i look at the rap game i look at wrestling it really mirrors they really mirror each other in terms of they both run on blurred lines yeah like like wrestling is blurred lines like it's 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 fake but it, the shit's real you know yeah and yeah 100 you know and i feel like raps like that as well a lot of the stuff that we might think is real once you get into the stuff you're like oh it's not really what what it appeared to be yeah a lot of show, a lot of showman a lot of showmanship you know yeah yeah but the main the main main thing that i that i take from it in terms of comparisons is getting yourself over mm-hmm. you feel me Facts. whether you're Facts. doing music whether you're wrestling Facts, so bro. yeah there's 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 lots of comparisons i think to be made and who were your guys growing up? Who were you like? Who was your favorite wrestlers growing up? Who was your go-to guys? Um, I think it, it, you know, it depends on the era. First era for me when I came into wrestling, it was it was Hogan, it was Warrior, Macho Man. Uh, Warrior was my guy. Mm. And then um, fast forward a couple of years, Brett, Brett's yeah, the man. guy in my opinion. Brett's Absolutely. Brett's my, you know, he's my goat. Um, That's Brett, what I'm talking about. <laughs> Um, relax, <laughs> no, that's my guy, too, bro. And I'm thinking after that, who who was my guys? Uh, see, I was a rocky guy, you know, obviously, Stone Cold Rock, Triple H, that era. Um, I was a rocky guy, um, and I think it's crazy the amount of not hate, but Rock doesn't get his ratings for me. No, he doesn't. It seems like he's he doesn't. disliked. It's a weird one with The Rock, you know. I'm glad you said that. It's a weird one. Because even like, even I'm a bit guilty of it. Because not to say that I, I love The Rock. Rock is like one of my favourites of all time. But for some reason, because he's reached a higher echelon in life in general, I feel like we just disregard how great that man is. And like, that's exactly, when I talk about exactly. my Matt Rushmore, it was only this year, I deeped it, yeah. I was like, Right, if you're being honest with yourself, like if you're really being honest with yourself, The Rock is in your Mount Rushmore. Like, cause I, for years, I would say my Mount Rushmore, my Mount Rushmore was Brett, Austin, Savage, and um, Flair. Flair. Yeah, that was my four. But when I really deep, as much as I do love Savage, Rock is getting in there over Savage. Let's be real. I'm being absolutely real. And I do love Savage. Savage is my absolute guy. But yeah. the amount of quotables I used to say with The Rock, the amount of times I used to mimic him in school the amount of times i used to do the people's elbow on my bedrooms and the rock bottom and all this like all three of us could easily quote a rock promo in, in, in a heartbeat 100. and even yeah. and even on like a bigger level there was no one else that kind of looked like us that we could look up that that was in that space mm-hmm. in, in the main event scene exactly you know, kid like top you know top way um but i think and i do, think and it's do that, it I better think. And do it better than his white counterparts. And do it better than them. Killed it. Killed exactly. it. Exactly. Came out saucy and a Versace and that doing, yeah. you know what I'm saying? And man is like, yeah. <laughs> um, but I think it's exactly what you said. He's gotten so big. It's almost like, like you're not ours anymore. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. But even when I look, I was, what was I watching? I was watching Rock Hogan. And I was... I was noticing um you see that one like, there? There's, there's something that he done. I can't remember. It was like um it might have just been like a kip up. It might have been something real. I think it was real subtle. It was like a kip up, but the, the execution and the showmanship 10 10. Like, amazing. 100. Really good. Really he really good. like as good as Hogan was in that match, um, I I think the rock carried that match. What do you think, mate? Yeah, I think so. I, I 100% think so. Like, that match is enough for, for anyone to see that, obviously, Hogan is Hogan, yeah. but The Rock was an absolute star. Like, the electricity, literally electricity, before that match had even started, before the man had even touched each other, like, the crowd were gagging for it. 
And it's literally, like Faze said, with it's little things, the punch, the sauce on it. You know, when you go to stamp on a man, there's a little leg shake and done. Yeah. The kip up and then, you know, smell of the air and everything. The oh, guy yeah. was beyond, like, in performance aspect. Like, it shouldn't surprise anyone he's the biggest actor in the world right now. It should I not surprise a damn soul. I feel like it's it's like, um, because he's in he's in that same era as stone cold he gets he gets he gets a hard a hard rub mm -hmm. it's like these other footballers that are played with messi and ronaldo there's a lot that's, of ballers that's a good comparison, they're just yeah. not getting that because you're there with the goal and stone cold a lot of say is the, the the greatest you know yeah i that's a very good shout phase it's like it's like iniesta isn't it iniesta not getting his ballon d'ors <laughs> That was a scam. You said that face. I'm so yeah, glad you said that, bro. That was a scam. No, literally, yeah. Me and my boy earlier was talking about that tape, how Henri never got it over Nedved. He never got it over Michael Owen. And and I remember I was being a bit ignorant and young. No, I want to say ignorant because Ronaldinho is he's he's my goal, isn't it? I love Ronaldinho. But I remember saying back then, I was like, nah, he was never gonna win it over Dinho. But now that I deep it, yeah. That year, Henri was, was robbed. Henri was probably the robbed. Best, best in yeah. the world. The thing yeah, is, I'm, I'm not even mad that the Ronaldinho, Ronaldinho's, Ronaldinho, you know, something else. But yeah, Ned's dead, and oh, Ned's and I can't. It's unforgivable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was that was yeah. a robbed thing, though. Okay, mm -hmm. all right. Fair, well, okay, and then and then what got you into like? Were you as a kid? Were you always? Did you always collect merch, or did you, or is this something that you've gone into quite uh, like you've gone into quite recently, and you? Uh, um. I had I had bits and pieces. I definitely had the wrestling figures. Yeah. Um, I had mad VHS, all the magazines. I had like me too. I was a I was a real fan. Like I had yeah. been a real a real fan, not like no no new fan. I've been invested, and I've been like a I've been a WWE loyalist or a WWF loyalist. I watch other bits and pieces, but um, you know. So WWF you were never were you were never were you never into WCW much? I. I, I was when it started heating up over there. I felt like a pagan watching it, but I couldn't help it. <laughs> I was I, I was jumping over. I was. I was seeing like Booker T and um and the Steiner and Goldberg and NWO. Like, yeah, um, but um yeah, I used to, I used to collect, I used to have bits and pieces, not so much the merch, but what had happened was I got to a stage of my music where I was feeling a bit just disillusioned, you know. And I, I felt like I had to, I had to, I kind of had to go back to my first love because I, I was, I, I, I lost the love a bit. You feel me? So that's how yeah, I kind of stumbled back into the merch. I just started seeing these little bits and pieces, and I was like, oh shit, you know? Yeah. And that's how I stumbled into it. Um, and really, it really, it really, it really started started properly when um, there was a show. Um, where Rosenberg was on the same bill, I was on the same, on the same show, and I knew I'd be able to romance him because I had I had mad shirts. I had the the Bret Hart versus Ric Flair night two shirt. It's got mad, glitter on it. mad, mad, crazy shirt, beautiful shirt. Mad. So um, I dropped that on him. Obviously, we were talking. You know, what I'm saying built a little a little relationship. He put me onto wrestling for sale, and. Who, who, in my opinion, is the top dog when it comes to this wrestling match? He kind of, you know, kind of set pace with that. Um, so that was yeah. my, 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 my sort of, you know, that was kind of the way I stumbled into it. Okay, okay, okay. That's sick. That's a very interesting story, still. And then, and now you've got a an Instagram called WWF Plug. Um, and that's yeah. where you sell a lot of your merch because you've got loads of shirt, bro. I've seen, I'm, I'm seeing all the things that you've got, and I'm so fascinated. And and yeah. and, and, and is is the access of how you're finding these things or collecting these things? A lot of people can't gain access to what how you're getting it. So big up yourself. Yeah. Please let people know um, about your Instagram and you know how if they want to, anyone wants to find any retro shirts, how they can contact you. Yeah, straight up, you can hit me on WWF plug. That's the Instagram or. Uh... You can hit me on wwfts.com. That's the website, and I've got mad stuff. It's not just t-shirts, you know. A lot of collectors, um, they they collect only t-shirts. I have yeah. 
all types of stuff. I like everything. I have the cards and stickers, scarves. and I'm, I'm seeing have... stuff there that I hadn't even seen before. Like, I didn't even know it was released or made. Yeah, it's really, it's really like a, it's really like an Easter, uh, uh, Easter egg hunt because once you, you, you know, you might get to a stage where you think you've kind of come across everything, you've unearthed everything, but mm. there's always a next piece someone will pop up with this. Yeah. This Bret Hart shirt, you know, a, a Bret Hart house show. So, you know, that, that shit might not have got sold in the, in the, in the catalogs. You got to go to that house show to get this. Mm. Yeah. From 91. And it's, you know, so it's just uncovering these gems and um, kind of, it's childhood stuff, isn't it? It's just that it's that stuff we love from our childhood that we that 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 we're able to get now. The stuff we couldn't get when we were youths. Yeah. yeah, and that's and that's also one thing I really loved about when you know when you rap as well. You always reference a lot of wrestling and a lot of stuff that you grew up watching, a lot of stuff that you love. You know, football or wrestling or whatever. You're a man, you don't shy away from these things where a lot of rappers will try and some rappers not not a lot today, but some rappers will probably yeah. pretend they're too cool for those things. Um, yeah, like. You know, I remember one 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 day I met you, I met you one time in a club, and uh, and I, I I quoted one of your bars to you back to you about the you said something about the Owen Hart line, you were on top, but then you drop Owen Hart, and I was like, bro, that's one of the best. Like, it's the flow of it as well. Um, like how much how much is if how much is the wrestling influenced your style of rapping as well? Um, it's a heavy influence, man, because it's a big part of my life. Mm feel mm. me so naturally it just seeps into my writing it seeps into my tattoos it seeps into my clothes yeah um i stopped watching wrestling for years for a strong decade i missed a strong decade i signed out um around the time john cena started rapping yeah um <laughs> around them times <laughs> cena was heating he just won the the the, the u.s strap of big show yeah. Four or something. It was around right, them maybe, times. Yeah. 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 And you know, it was just growing up. I was like 15, 16, and so I left it. Um, and I remember I came back, literally I came back, yeah. Was um we had a we had a a, a Wu Block show, yeah. Wu okay. Block, which is Wu Tang and D Block. Yeah. It was meant yeah. to be it was meant to be um it was meant to be Ghostface and Styles, yeah. But Styles right. got shift something happened he got nicked in america he couldn't fly out so it was it was ghost face and chic anyway that night was it was the mania it was brock undertaker and for some reason i just felt like i had to watch this match i just had a feeling so i left that show early i got back and i got back and i couldn't find the stream that was working so i remember i was searching searching couldn't find a stream and by the time my streams come on it's like it's like the end of the match. Feel me? I missed the match, but I've seen Twitter going crazy, like going nuts. So there's that, there's that, there's that point there. And then there's the second point of my boy from high school. Every time I'd see him, he, he'd start going, yes, yes, yes. And I'm saying, what yeah. are you doing? <laughs> yeah. and, and he wouldn't say nothing. He just kept doing it. And he'd say, oh, bruv, you need to, you, you need to start watching wrestling. So yeah, that was my entry point again. It was that mania. Um, oh, that's so the the, the rest 30. of the 30, 30 yeah, yeah when brian won right. and... was that that, 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 that was one that that was a great mania that mania was nuts. great mania yeah that, that which mania one was, was um seth cashing in was that the next the, the year afterwards the next one For yeah me, that 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 moment alone the best let alone the rest of the card there was a solid card 100 percent. that mania is probably the best mania for me in in recent memory absolutely far. i think before that mania and 30 I think the best was actually the one where you signed out 04 with Benoit and Triple H and Sean mm. in Madison Square Garden. That was a dope one. But then, yeah, you're right. It, you know, the confetti, the Benoit and Eddie. And yeah, Eddie. yeah, yeah, in the end. Yeah, yeah. That, that was a sick the last mania. mania I saw, yeah. Yeah, that was like, I, that was for the wrestling, that was for the wrestling heads, for sure. That that mania was yeah, definitely see, booked for the wrestling heads. That era there, that era there, yeah. There was, there was Benoit, there was Eddie, there was Jericho, there was Angle. Between them yeah. four, the exactly. matches that they had between them, crazy. Yeah. crazy, crazy, crazy. But yeah, you're right. I think 31, 2015, when Seth cashed in, I think they haven't topped that mania since, since, since that mania. That moment, wow, it's crazy. No, was that? I think we all marked out, bro. We were all crazy. Bro. I don't think, was... The thing is, I don't think anyone saw it, even though it was right there. Did anyone pray it? Did you not? No, nah, I didn't pray it. I didn't pray it. I didn't. I didn't call it. I didn't pray it. 
I didn't pray either. I remember, I remember like Seth Rollins' music hitting. And then obviously Seth was a heel, you know, probably top heel them times. And I literally thought, my reaction was, what does this prick want now? Like, <laughs> he's had his match, he's lost to Randy Orton, what is he doing? And then literally he's like flapping his arms, running down the ramp with the money in the briefcase. And I'm like, oh my God, this guy's going to do yeah, it. Bro, when he when he ran out, I went nuts, bro. I went nuts. And the match, and the match before that moment was insane. It was good. Bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like between Brock and Reigns, they, they were going at it as well. Snug. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So, what do you not think of Seth's current work? I personally love it. I still love him. I know, I know, he hasn't. Um, I don't think he's reached the heights back of that year of that run when he was champion yeah. and doing all that. Like he was stealing the show week in the week best. out. Yeah. Before he mashed up his knee, he was yeah. killing it. But, dog, yeah. girl, but I still admire him. Like. Like he still does outstanding work. He still does outstanding work. I just, you know, it's a shame that we didn't get that consistent Seth going forward. R Rollins, you know? Rollins is most more than likely. It's either him or AJ are the best wrestlers on that in that entire company. Yeah. And if Rollins was allowed to do more than the WWE style, we yeah. would be, you know, people say our oh, Omega over Rollins and stuff like that. The, the debate is there because you know we know that we haven't seen all of. Rollins repertoire. If we get to see everything this guy can really do, boy. Yeah. I like true. I like I mean I'm a fan of not having to do not having to do all of that. Mm -hmm. You know, not having to do like 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 I'm a fan of not having to kill yourself week in, week out. I'm not I don't like yeah, watching yeah. matches where I know you're getting hurt, you know, and that's what yeah. I'm with a lot of like, New Japan matches, even though this it's wild, but I don't know. I'm, I'm 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 not too I'm not too keen on it. Like I can't watch it week in. I can't watch it week in week out. Yeah, no, I understand that. No, that's that's fair. And and it's and it does come. And a part of that is that it does get a bit repetitive as well. You know, like as much as I love what these guys are doing, it's just like all right. You know, it's not. I don't know. I feel like wrestling today should go back to the days of less is more. And I think like there's so much more. Like they're giving us everything, and it, and I feel like sometimes you need to save those high end spots for like major events, like manias. Big like moments. Yeah. Manias yeah. Should, personally, mania should have you go full 400, 360, doing all this madness in that match, and then you leave it there, and everything yeah. else is like. Just and this and this comes back to your argument, Skillet, of the kickouts and all of that kind of stuff. The yeah. amount of kickouts we see in wrestling, because literally, like we see like Canadian destroyers and people get dropped on their head and they're kicking out at two, but bro, you should be dead. Exactly. We should, we should really be calling uh, the Undertaker or not the Undertaker, eight Undertaker to come and pick you up and move your body because you shouldn't be escaping out of what you just went through. But Man, of course they water like, it down and AEW this past week, we yeah. saw Cody go for a flaming table. Did they kick out? If you were... No, no. Cody <laughs> put Andrade through a table. Sorry. When, say, when they were doing the pin, they were both still on fire. Like there's yeah. still flames on both of both men, and yeah. this is you know like Faze is saying, that's a TV match, a main event TV match. Did did we need to go through fire on a TV match? No, not at all. That's that's the thing. Much. There it's was no blood like... feud. They, these guys have been you know tossing and arguing with each other just here and there. There's been no blood feud to even justify why a table was set on fire and they went through it. But I guess like you're saying, this is like the new style of what's you know selling. It's, it's got to make become... sense, man. Mm -hmm. I feel like the storytelling in wrestling is real weak these days. That's like the main, the main thing that's lacking. I don't, I can't comment too much on the AEW because I don't watch it like that. I, yeah, I yeah. see, I see bits and pieces, but with WWE, well, it's not just their storytelling. That mm. you know, I feel there's I feel a whole host of with them right now. Yeah, a mm. bunch of stuff. Mm. A bunch. Of let's stuff, talk about yeah. it. Let's talk about it, face. So what, 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 what are you enjoying? Let's start with what are you enjoying at the moment in WWE, and then we can talk about what you're not enjoying. You see the t-shirt? I was about yeah. to say it gotta yeah. be that t-shirt, boy. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what? The... Yeah, I have to. I have to give the ratings to. I don't know who. I don't know who I have to give it to, but someone needs to get the ratings for saving the Roman Reigns project because it was looking like the damage that they done was going to be irreversible. Yeah, Paul Heyman. It's Heyman, bro. It's Heyman, man. Paul Heyman, Heyman needs to find an investor and start his own company. I'm sorry. It, it needs to happen. 
I think I think Heyman, the damage, all that stuff that he went through with ECW, I I think that's put him off from ever running a wrestling company ever again. I actually even asked which him, makes remember, sense. Which makes I sense. asked him. I said, would you ever be like interested in running? He's like, what? What for? You know, he's just, he was giving me that Heymanism. Mm-hmm. Like, why? Why would I want to do that? I'm, I've got a good job. I'm getting paid well. <laughs> it's like, I've been there, done that. And I was like, all right, fair enough. Then I was like, oh, what about like getting involved with NXT? Are you excited to like help Triple H take NXT forward? Triple H needs to learn how to do the, the, the himself. And I was like, right, okay, cool. <laughs> he's just not on it. He's just, I've, he's been there. And I, you know what? When you go, I guess I can understand that because my man was sacrificing everything. Man used to live in his mom and dad's yard. Remember that? Remember that um, phase? When man was in ECW, yeah, yeah, yeah. living in his mom's yard. Yeah, his, he was, yeah, he was going through it. Yeah, bro. He was going through it. Money-wise, he was going through it. So he just probably thinking, as, as, as you're right, Max, he is, he's got a lot of experience and he's much smarter now. And he's, he probably could do a good job of it. He's just, he's probably thinking, why should I? Bro, even when he was creative director during the pandemic times, I say creative director, whatever their role is like, the equivalent over there he was doing for raw and we that's when we were getting like buddy murphy um alistair black coming to the forefront we're seeing the younger talents kind of prospering and then vince mcmahon came and took the book you know back off him and all of that they sacked him um and then actually brought him back with the whole roman stuff yeah um he he's got a great mind for it and as we know he's got a lot of relation a relationship with you know the family and he he has literally brought roman to prominence where he should be he blatantly yeah. gave him a gimmick in it like you're you're the you're the tribal chief you're the guy bloodline it makes sense yeah i'd yeah, imagine that um at this stage but in terms of like running a company he's just trying to work smart and not harder you know that, that's that's exactly it phase and i and i feel like you know and, and I, I think he allowed he's allowed to you know after everything he's yeah. given the industry he's changed he's that like, you know he, he helped change the american industry of wrestling you know what i mean a lot of the stuff we see today is Haven's influence from ECW, and so you know what? Uh, yeah, game changer. Back. Yeah, um, one hundred, yeah. one hundred. Roman, yeah, the Roman stuff um, is it's, it's real good, very good. Um, I'm still invested, which says a lot because it's been going for over a year. Um, did he pin Bray or did he pin Braun? Braun for that. He pinned okay. Braun. Yeah. Okay, good. Uh, but on the flip side of that, they released Bray Wyatt, bro. And I'm okay. I'm, what, um, I don't have the words. I still don't have the words. <laughs> um, I still can't believe it. I still cannot believe it. You know, um, <laughs> bro. Oh man, he was that, a genius. Oh. He was. He was a genius. I th- I felt like when you're someone like Bray. And you're giving all this genius and all this smart, intelligent gimmicks and stories, and you ha- and you have to share that with writers who are not going to fully understand what you're trying to do. I, I could see like the- the- they must have had so many arguments going back and forth. Like, I mean, face. What did you think of that match he had with Cena at last year's WrestleMania during the Firefly pandemic? Firefly Funhouse. Amazing. Let- Thank you, brother. I thought I like I showed that to my brother. Shout out to Kana. Kana don't even watch wrestling like he used to. I showed it to him, and he was in awe. Phase like he was in. He was like, "This is one of the best things I have ever seen, bro." Because it was amazing. different. It was and amazing. Even even the the, the Firefly Funhouse segments when them fir- when that first one dropped. Yeah, I said, "No, nah, this guy is. He's different. He's bro. he's he's out of this world." Just off the first one, and then they're like the that he started bringing in the puppets, the you know the old versions of himself and the theme, the mask. I said, nah, he's he's my guy. I came back when I came when I came back. I came back because uh, Daniel Bryan. I saw him do. I, bear in mind, I hadn't watched wrestling for like ten years, so mm. I'm seeing new moves. I'm seeing like new shit. I'm like, yo, I've never seen this before. Right, then I've seen right. Seth and I said, yo, this is like Shawn Michaels. This is like this gen Shawn Michaels. Then I saw Bray. And everyone said Bray's the new taker. But I saw Mankind, early Mankind, mm, when he mm, first came mm, in. It was mm. scary. When he was he scary. Was 96, 96, my time. Demented, yeah. Bro. yeah. Boiler room match. Yeah, Empire. bro. <laughs> yeah, said, bro. Oh, shit. This is like a psychological genius. You know what I'm saying? I saw it. Yeah. 
and even his like the cult leader stuff, amazing stuff. Yeah. Top tier stuff, and they destroyed it. They killed him. He came back better. They killed him again. You know what I'm saying? It's like um it's like the biggest injustice for me. <laughs> it's no, I'm, I'm hurt. hurt. I'm, I'm hurt. But the I'm fiend upset. the fiend character Crazy. was fantastic. Like Crazy. even Crazy. from a aesthetic point of view, like they nailed it. Like yeah. for them now not to to book it in line with how all the effort they put into how he looked and what they were doing with him and stuff backstage, mm-hmm. it's a travesty, really and truly. But the travesty. the biggest mistake was putting the belt on him because characters like that don't need the belt. They don't really need title runs. Like Undertaker and Kane will never go down for, you know, in, in fans' memories as, oh, they had X amount of championships. You know, we don't even really mention how many times them man win the belts because it's it never really matters. It's the character. And that is the road they should have went down with the and Fiend. Also, and Max, also, I also think what I think damaged him as well. Do you remember when... Was it in Saudi Arabia when Seth was walking out with the belt and then the lights? No, it, I don't think it was Saudi. It wasn't Saudi. It was after a pay-per-view because he lost the belt to Bray at Saudi. He lost he, he lost the belt to Goldberg at Saudi and then okay. the light thing happened like you're saying. Who lost the belt to Goldberg? The Fiend. No, there was a time before before Fiend won Oh, Helen in a Cell against Seth Helen in a Cell when Seth was walking out and the lights went out and remember that pop that Bray got? The yeah. Fiend showed up and the crowd when but now I'm talking about old school attitude era pop for Bray, mm. right? And I had goosebumps. I was like, all right, this is working, yeah. That's when I was like, this is working. But you know what the mistake they should have done? They they should have booked the fiend like Goldberg in regards of the length of matches. His matches should have been 30 seconds, one minute, two minutes, him just coming out there, decimating his opponents. Did it, did it. Booking him strong, like instead of having these long ass matches where he's kicking out of everything two seconds. When mm. when Seth put the cinder blocks on his head and he gets up from that, that that was the end of that was the start of the end of break. They, but, they overbooked it. They overbooked that, it. Yeah, they overbooked that. That the issue with that match, the Hell in a Cell, when then I think uh, Seth used a sledgehammer or something like that yeah. on the Fiend, and they said no disqualification in a Hell in a Cell not, match. What did you not think of that match? I, I genuinely enjoyed it. People don't like that match at I all. Love, I loved that match. I yeah, loved that I really match. liked it. I loved it. I loved it solely for the... I, I love it solely for the reaction at the end because I've never seen a reaction like that to a, to, to a wrestling match. That was like, screw job. People hate it for a lot of reasons because of the red, the red cell and then the red lighting they did. And then, of course, the, like I say, a Hell in a Cell match ended in a disqualification, which doesn't make sense. But... um. I generally thought the match was good. Rollins and The Fiend hated it. They, you know, they said that that match got worst match of the year, 2019. Yeah. Um, but, and they went yeah. backstage and they said that they literally bollocksed Vince McMahon. The next day they had to have like a, a like a talk amongst the three of them because of how that went down and the booking of the characters involved and how it's just messed up everything. Um, yes, and man. they probably knew from that minute forward that, yeah, The Fiend was dead basically yeah that was the start i think that's because the frustration came out they they really should have booked the fiend they should and i think less is more with the fiend as well they shouldn't have him on weekly programming sometimes you got like you know what like what they did with sting back in the day phase when sting used to be in the rafters and mm. sting wouldn't be in every episode sometimes you have nwo this dominating week in week out and no sting to be found it was like where the hell is sting and then you're waiting for sting to show up and when he shows up it was like the perfect time when he shows up. And I think that's what they should have done with the Fiend. Like not they, having... they, they countered that somewhat by then, you know, like we said, he had the other character, the, the guy that was just oh, in the yeah. jumper and messing around. Of so they course. did do that and only brought out the Fiend for the big matches. Even when, you know, the Fiend was universal champion. When it was someone like The Miz, it was Bray Wyatt that came out to defend the title as Bray Wyatt sort of thing. Um, and yeah, he did that for Braun Strowman as well. It was only when he went to that, that dark place he became the fiend so yeah, they did yeah. that somewhat but like we said i think the issue was giving him the title um then because at that point he has to lose it at some point you give him the title the character has yeah. to lose and now is he really you know this supernatural character you're trying to tell us he is so what what do you guys this is a question for both of you so feel free to answer when you're ready what do you think it is with like has WWE run out? I mean, apart from clearly this Roman Reigns storyline, because this storyline is being built 
like an old school wrestling storyline. They're taking this time. They're really thinking through what they're doing with Reigns. They're, 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 they're making Reigns so strong. He's beating all these different opponents. Reigns is actually happy to play a proper heel when he cheats to win and stuff. Like that. But like, what do you think it is with others? Do you think Vince gets bored? Does he just get bored easy? Is he not list Is he not willing to lay out a storyline? Or do you have to do what Heyman's doing? Where he's like, no, 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 no. Let me take care of this, Vince. I've got this story. This is my storyline. I know what I'm doing. Trust me. This is what we're gonna do with Vince. And Vince is like, right, I like that. But with, with the other writers, they must be pulling their hair out because Vince. It seems to be Vince gets bored every two seconds. After you, bro. I mean, I mean, <laughs> I mean <laughs> it, it is that it's a lot of short term stuff. There's zero planning. Um, I think everything is just built off what's the next moment we can create. You they built hundred. they built Bianca Belair for so long, right? In the recent times, she won the Royal Rumble, she won her main event of WrestleMania, she became champion, she still tangled with all of the four horsemen, but Becky came back. So we need to create a moment. And basically sabotage everything we've done with Bianca Belair till this, this moment. And she lost in 26 seconds. With everything they're doing right now with Roman, the moment will be who's going to beat Roman um, and whoever they're going to build towards that. And that is that is it. It's just what is the next moment we can create here? And there is no planning for any of the, the other roster members at all. Probably why they don't care about the tag division at all. Because it's like, um, in, amongst tag teams, what moment can we really create? The last tag team moment was probably when the Hardys returned in 2018. Yeah. That's that probably like the last crazy. tag team the last moment tag that team happened. Moment. Yeah. All so three us, All three of us would have popped when that happened. Yeah, yeah. I lost my mind when that happened. Yeah. And yeah. I, I I, had a good idea that that was going to happen because they had just done their ring. Me too. I had, I had an English, I still popped. That's, yeah, that's yeah, weird. Yeah, 100%. That's crazy. We're, we're fans. We, we do that. We know stuff yeah. and we still react. But like, yeah, it's just moment to moment. And um, it's like, yeah, burn everything else. If we can, if we can have a massive pop here, and people will talk about it for the next week or whatever, then we literally throw in the bin what we've been creating over the last six months before that. Well, do you agree? Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> I think obviously Vince is he's known to be like a madman, isn't it? He? He's 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 super centric. You can't you can't tell him. You can't tell him nothing. It's his company. Um, the problem is, I think, like, and I'm a big Vince McMahon fan, like, I, I love Vince McMahon. Yeah, um, I think the big problem is he's old now, isn't it? Mm -hmm. He's old, and it's said that he doesn't like tradition. So, as wrestling fans, we like tradition, it's the stuff we came up on, it's the stuff that's lacking now. Um, it's said he doesn't like. In terms of the IC belt, for example, yeah, a prime example. This belt has been fodder for since I uh, since I don't know, ten years, twenty years, fifteen years. That's the IC strap. When I grew up, that was the strap. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. Who was? I mean, the Miz. Miz done work for that strap. Mm -hmm. he, he put in good work. Um, who else put in work for that? But but you know, there's there's all these old things that seem to have gone out the window, and he wants to try and do current stuff. But an old man can't, he can't do current stuff. He he's mm -hmm. he's not tuned in. He's not tapped in. So Absolutely. it seems like you have got a bunch of out of date people writing storylines, and it's it's not connecting. It's actually garbage. Like raw, terrible, terrible show. Um. I, their target audience must be like little little kids. It can't be for us. It's 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 very interesting. And and the face, I think you're absolutely right about that. And it's interesting what Vince allows what input to be okay and not okay. I mean, I guess obviously if you're bringing in dollars, Vince is definitely going to be like, yeah, you go ahead. Like obviously, New Day, mm -hmm. New Day brings in money. So you know, Xavier Woods is the brainchild of a lot of the New Days promos a lot of the new day's merch a lot of the new day uh, attire you know what i mean a lot of the stuff the new day does that's xavier's brainchild working and he's obviously would have presented it to the writing team 
Well, maybe not. <laughs> maybe maybe the New Day just rock up and be like, yo, we're going to say this. But like Vince is obviously allowing New Day to express themselves because it, he knows that works, you know? Um, and I'm, obviously he's allowing Heyman to do what he's doing with Reigns because he knows, you know, he know he trusts in Heyman. But it just feels like with others, when they try and do something new, Vince will probably give it a one a one TV slot shot. And if it didn't even if it didn't even make anyone laugh or did anyone make any, he's just like, nah, like, that didn't work. Like, he doesn't give things time. Yeah, he doesn't. He just doesn't really give. I mean, obviously the fiend. He knew the fiend is a is a genius. So he, I mean, Bray. So he was letting Bray do his thing. But even then, there was conflict there. You know, so the, was, little, uh, the little Vince puppet as the devil, like that was genius. Great stuff. Yeah, great, yeah. great stuff. And like, you know what I loved about the match with Cena? Sorry to keep talking about the match with Cena, but. The, the the references to Cena's career and and the references between Bray and Cena's matches and and how how when Cena and Bray had that match in WrestleMania thirty one wasn't it thirty one yeah or 30, 30, 30, which, which one Bray 30. and Cena. Bray and Cena that was 30, 30 wasn't it yeah, yeah. yeah and you know that Bray should have went over and Cena didn't I mean I mean Cena did and Bray didn't mm. the fact that they referenced that in the, like there was so much genius. It felt like a, a mix between, you know, the straight genius, Eric Andre, and, like, there was so much different references. I was just like... It was an acid trip. That's 100%. That's exactly what it was. And it was it was brilliant. And and, and then it felt like Bray was just so daring to be like... And I'm and I, and big up to Cena, too, because Cena would have clocked the references as well. And mm. Cena was like, no, go, let's go for it. Let's take the piss out of me. Let's, take the, let's talk your truth. Talk how you feel. Talk about how yeah, Vince Cena, is the devil. Yeah. Cena needs his flowers for that, like you're saying, because it's, it's a very self-aware thing to do, to critique your your bosses, to critique your bosses being the top guy that you are. And almost, yeah, like you're saying, give Bray this platform to make a mockery of you, mockery of everyone, and willingly partake in that and play the role that he played. So, yeah, big up Cena for that still. Yeah, his last, his last couple of years have been very given. Do you know what I'm saying? And it's, yeah, it's it's done. It's done a lot of good. Um, yeah. But with the Vince thing, he's I feel like it's a he's a he's a special person. You know, there's only one Vince McMahon, and it's it's going to be they're going to have this predicament of when it's time for a new ownership. It's going to be like what happened with Fergie and United and Arson and Arsenal. You can't you can't replace these people. And yeah, even though gone. things might seem bad now, when Vince is gone, it will be worse. Uh, That's my feeling. Faze is, I think Faze is absolutely right. I think Vince right now is keeping WWE top four. <laughs> he, he's keeping them. He's keeping them in the Champions League. You know what I mean? He's keeping WWE. But like, as much as Vince is doing madness and they're not winning titles, they're still in the mix. They're in yeah, top four. Yeah. And I think Faze is right. When Vince goes, Jesus Christ, WWE is going to be like Arsenal real, right now. They, Arsenal they, yeah, right. That's when a real madness is going to start. They, they, they've got non-wrestling people involved in their business at a high level and that is very dangerous like they, they like i i'm sure i've heard they've got like they had maybe the guy's not around anymore they had a pizza hut executive like a marketing person from pizza hut executive you know what's funny at a about high that? level do you know what's funny about that when wwe was doing all the dvds and documentaries about wcw starting up back in the day in the early 90s and they had and Flair would say, um, I can't remember the guy the guy's name that he used to have beef with Flair. They wanted to change Flair's um look, they wanted Flair yeah, to cut mm. his hair. And Flair was like, What do you know? You you used to own you used to be a former owner of the Pizza Hut. Like he used to be the vice president of Pizza. And now it's come full circle and it's happening again. It's it's funny the, how history repeats itself, isn't it? It's the rumors so of the rumors of obviously them selling to Disney are only intensifying like literally every day. Um, and whether Disney come and take them over and basically turn every wrestler into a superhero and try to do something there. I, I don't know if, if Disney take over will the storylines be actually be better because they've actually got, you know, writers and all of that kind of stuff. Or again, is it, you know, non-wrestling people tampering with something they don't really know and annoying us traditionalists sort of thing? I mean, when I was younger, obviously because I was a massive comic book fan as well. Mm. So when I was younger, when I heard that Disney wanted to buy Marvel, I was shook. I was like, oh my God, this is going to ruin the franchise. But it's actually ended up being one of the best things that's ever happened. And and they don't really tamper much with 
um, you know, as long as it's like something that the fans will love, they leave it. You get know what I mean? Mm. So if WWE, if those, if Disney do merge with WWE, I'm I'm praying they do the exact same approach with WWE. No, let's let the ex- experts run it, and we just give them money for whatever they need. And and we might have to shut down certain storylines, but you know what I mean. Like yeah. as long as they don't fuck fuck with the product, I don't know. But it's a bit, it's a bit bad still. Um, uh, on a side note, let me ask you though, know, what's what's your thoughts on CM Punk and Daniel Bryan right now? Okay, I'm glad you asked this question. So, Max, do you want to answer this first, or shall I go first? You go first. <laughs> So, um, I feel Brian has proved my point to so many people I grew up watching wrestling with who didn't, didn't unfortunately have the access to independent wrestling like I did to know of his true work. And I, like, I'm Mex- I think Max will agree with me. I don't honestly, like, some people think there was a major difference between Brian WWE and Brian of Ring of Honor. And th- I can see that there is differences in terms of what Brian can and can't do. But in terms of his in-ring work and display and his his work ethic and his dedication and his the way he can just make you in awe when he's wrestling, I always felt Brian was consistent with that, right? So I think Brian has just proven that he's the best of that generation, right? And Brian is bringing that to AEW. And like, you've got people who I, I'm not going to mention any names, but people that I know that were shitting on Brian, they were like, oh, he's corny, man. What do you like Brian for? Well, you like this guy in WWE, did it? And now they're saying, oh my God, Brian's the best. What? I didn't realize Brian was this good. But at, I what, stage, Brian, hmm? at what stage were they saying that he's, he's whack and he's corny? It was when he was in WWE, when, when he was the champion, innit? the yes, the yes stuff. And Brian was yeah. doing a madness back then. He was, if you watch his matches, his all matches, of his matches, his matches, his matches speak, speak for himself. Exactly. Exactly. Brian was having classics with Eric Rowan, bro. <laughs> 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 and that's not a slight on Eric Rowan. That's not a slight on him. But you know what I mean, bro? Brian would put on, he could put on an ace five star match with anyone. And, um, but now obviously now he's in AEW and he could be a bit more hardcore. They're all loving it. But anyway, Punk, on the other hand, Mm-hmm. I feel like I think I think Punk has kind of exposed like I think I think he exposed what he truly I mean I know in his pipe bomb which is one of the best pipe bomb best problems of all time he was mainly talking about change and he did hit some good points about how how WE is a stagnant company and nobody really gets through and nobody gets this and that. But I think he kind of really exposed what he really truly wanted in uh, the deal with Vince and Triple H. And not to say that he doesn't care about people in the locker room. I think he does. But I think he really just wanted to be the main man. I think he wanted to be Cena. And I think he's getting that now with AEW. And unfortunately... He's not Cena. He's not Cena. I was gonna be. I'm gonna be real. I'm gonna say he's not Cena. He's not. Yeah. Um. I think. Um. Like you said with Daniel Bryan, Bryan Danielson, the guy is just fantastic. I mean, he he wants he wanted to leave so that he can wrestle for real, like wrestle, wrestle, like wrestle, yeah. like, and now he's getting an opportunity to do that weekly basis. He's just pulling out these performances, and um. As long as he's safe and you know he don't get no concussion injuries or anything like that, you know, mm-hmm. let all, all power to him. Let him keep going. He said that he's probably got about three more years left of this, so let him in, let him enjoy it. Um, happy to see him. Punk, on the other hand, I think it was a fantastic wrestling return. That probably yeah. is the last big yeah. ever yeah. wrestling um, return. Um, yeah. Special, special moment. Yeah, the 100%. pop was fantastic. I was never a, a punk guy like that, but I watched that and had goosebumps all over. I was marking out. I couldn't believe it. It was absolutely brilliant. Since then, I personally feel he's it's felt a bit reunion tourish. Like, oh, hi guys, um, hi next city, next city, next city. I'm here. He's been in dipped his foot in a few, you know, um, matches here and there. They're obviously telling a story right now in AEW where he's trying to get back to his best. He's seen can he actually still go at this kind of high level. And he's racking up wins. Um, but 
from what Punk has said, he's he's come here to kind of put people over and give the youngers, you know, a bit of a rub and all of that kind of stuff. Whereas Daniel Bryan is is more positioned like I'm coming for the title, I'm coming to be the top dog over here. So two different kinds of missions. Um, definitely way more interested into what Danielson's doing. But um, ha- I'm happy to see Punk. I'm happy to see that he's happy. You know, he's found the place of kind of Zen. He's got rid of all that, the deep hatred maybe, and he's just kind of moving on and this is what he wants to do in AEW. But um, yeah, he needs to get his teeth really stuck into something, in my opinion. And all this, happy to be here, happy to be back. Personally, I'm done with it. Like, uh, let's move on now. Well, hopefully this whole new feud that he's having with MJF will bring back mm. some old old CM Punk, Ring of Honor style promo CM Punk. But we'll see. Faze, so are you not really watching AEW much? Um, I'm, 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 I'm swinging over. I'm back and forth. Um, yeah. Like I missed the whole. I missed. I missed all of Punk's run. I didn't catch any of it. Um, in so, WWE. Right. Oh, yeah, really? so, okay. Yeah. So I'm not really too familiar with CM Punk. Um, mm. Of course, I know he's he's highly rated. So I tuned in for the the return, which, like I said, was a magical moment. Yeah. Even if it's just for that moment alone, it was worth it. But yeah. from the few matches that I've seen, I felt underwhelmed. And I think you hit the nail on the head when you're saying it feels like reunion, reunion Tory. You know, yeah. um, it's not. Um, I don't know. I just feel underwhelmed. This is the great CM Punk that you lot are talking about. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not impressed. Yeah. Well, the, the thing Bryan, is, on the other hand, you know, he's 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 the best. He's probably the best. Yeah, he's the best, bro. And I think Punk, I don't want to speak for Punk. I don't want to say that I know what he was thinking because I don't. I don't know him like that. But I felt like, I always felt he saw what was coming. And that was another reason why he wanted to leave. I felt like he saw the, like, obviously, because Punk and Brian go way back, innit? They used to wrestle together in Ring of Honor. So Punk would have known the high level of, of athlete that Brian is. Mm. You get me? Where, where unfortunately for Punk, even though he is a good wrestler, I feel he had he suffered a lot more injuries, or maybe not more injuries than Brian, but the injuries that he did suffer kind of damaged his, kind of limited, limited his ability of what he can do in the ring. And you can clearly see that by the end of 2012, 2013, he was starting to get a bit slow and he couldn't move as quick as he used to. And he was getting hurt by Ryback a lot and getting hurt by all these people. Where you're seeing, he's seeing Brian doing running 100 miles an hour doing all this madness and yep. getting back up and still going and still moving even though brian's mashing up his head even though brian's getting all these brain injuries brian is still going 100 miles an hour and he's seeing this and he's seeing the crowd chanting brian is, yeah yeah he's seeing oh my god so brian is just he's naturally he didn't have to cut a promo he didn't have to cost the industry to actually gain the fans He's oh, this. Oh no, this is not looking good for me. And, <laughs> and 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 honestly, this is what I honestly believe. I'm not even. I honestly believe. I hear it part, still. <laughs> I honestly believe this is part of his exit because I think he was thinking, Jesus Christ, they want him to win Royal Rumble. They don't even want me to win the Royal Rumble. They mm-hmm. want Brian to win it. Jesus Christ, Brian is. He could put on a better match than me in a main event. He won't. You know what I mean? He won't get like as much as they love me. Brian could put on a five star match. I can't put on a five star match. Brian, Brian can do this. I can't do that. Oh my God! Um, I, I better just. I, it's coming. It's. I'm gonna. He's gonna take my spot. I think he was that. He's taking my spot at Mania, and before I let him actually take my spot and he headline it and I wrestle Triple H in the in the middle of the card, I'm just gonna vamoose and go before anyone could even. I think. I think that, that was part that, of it. That theory makes sense. I'm going with it. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, there's there's it's, there's almost a level of like you're saying. Potential even if I got there, so. yeah. If, if even if Punk, you know, his demands got accepted, it's like oh, it's only because I whined about it, and then the machine put me there. Whereas Daniel Bryan was all organic. We all saw yeah. it. We all lived through that. So and um, they yeah. tried. Remember, guys, they tried to squash Bryan as much as they lie and say they didn't. The booking team tried to squash Brian yep. and it didn't work. So when, when Punk saw that, it's like, right, they're trying to squash it and it ain't working. No, all right, I'm, I'm good. Mm-hmm. That time, remember that time when they were all 
you remember that time they were all in the ring and they were yeah. all doing the, the championship thing was Orton and Cena doing it and, and Punk was in that same ring and Punk Mark Henry put on ring. Daniel Bryan yeah and yeah. the whole crowd was trying for Bryan and Punk was in that ring okay mm. that's okay. that says it all there that says it, it all there. He's, he's, he's really who he wants he's really who he wants to be you know what I'm saying Daniel, yeah. that position that space that Daniel Bryan occupies that that cult hero mm. is Daniel Bryan and 100 you know that he wants to be, yeah. And the cream, the cream rises. Like, it's not like Punk wasn't great. Everybody knows Punk is great. He's still got, he's still loved, and he's still, he's a, he's a legend. He's an icon. But I, yeah, I don't know. I think it's just crazy how the wrestling world works, man, and how how much everyone is. I, I didn't ever think Brian will be as over as he is from, but watching him back in Ring of Honor. But I'm glad it happened because he deserves it. So, what do you think? Cream, what do you think about this like explosion of wrestling and rap, kind of? Yeah, it's well, good. Man. Like it was always knocking, I guess. It was always knocking. Um, you know, I that like, you that like, when you were in Piff Gang, you guys never really I mean, I know you were mostly the I think you were the main wrestling guy in Piff Gang, but but I've, a sure. lot of people yeah, <laughs> but but I, I there was always references from from other rap members that you know no one really shied away from loving wrestling. Um, you know, it was it was always knocking, like you know, like I said, the likes of Action Bronson, you got Griselda now really championing wrestling. Um, mm. Wale, a massive wrestling mark. Um, and you know, back in the day, I remember Buster Rhymes and Ghostface and stuff that like, will quote wrestlers here and there. And um, so I think I think there's always been knocking on the door that it was always gonna happen eventually that wrestling and rap will finally uh collaborate. And now you're getting a lot of these wrestlers who are massive rappers, rap fans, or like you know, hip row and and uh, it's a shame about Hit Row. I felt that that I don't know. I, it just didn't work for me. They, they like, shouldn't have been called up, bro. Like the minute they got called up, or the rumor, the, the rumors are happening. I said these lot. You literally just put these lot together. Like yeah. we haven't seen nothing from them. Swerve was champion, North American champion. He had defended it once in like two hundred days or something like that. Like leave them to learn and get used to each other. For them to build some rapport. For the crowd to like them. Like I said, I think I said this to you. I think they moved them to the main roster to get rid of them because with the main move to the main roster, your contract um, re- thing goes to 90 days from 30 days. So mm-hmm. when they are released, then you can't just go back to work somewhere else in 30 days. You've got to wait 90 days. They're going to make you cold by the time someone picks you up. And it doesn't make sense to me. It, it's the only thing that makes sense to me that, yeah, we let's make these look cold and get rid of them. So that you know they're not com- com- going into other companies with WWE heat behind them, if you like. That makes sense. It's still, savage game. They're moving so savage. It's like mad, that. bro. It's mad, but it's I guess from their point of view, it's business, isn't it? Yeah, I, I, I'm. I mean, I'm just wondering where they're going with it. You had the best roster in the world. You had the best wrestlers. You let go of some of the craziest wrestlers, and you're employing like athletes and actors and. It's not making sense. I mean, Kevin Owens, Johnny Gargano's contract expires next week. Kyle O'Reilly by the end of the month. Sami Zayn, I think, end of February. So that's another four Sammy. of the best um, on their way out. Have you seen this thing they've just launched? I can't remember what it stands for, but it's WWE NIL, I think, N-I-L. They're basically setting up a program now to get collegiate athletes into wrestling. Like that, they're not hiding about the fact of we do not want the big indie stars anymore. This is literally the college, you know, basketball players, football players, um, maybe people that are made it to the NFL and stuff that f- have fallen out of it. They're making a program to get them straight into wrestling under the WWE banner now. So that's yeah, insane. They're not messing around with this direction that they're going in. Do you think project. with this project? If do you guys think if Kenny, I mean Kenny Omega, he's a he's a draw, isn't he? So, so this is probably a stupid question to ask, but do you think like if Kenny Omega was like to say to AEW, not anytime soon, maybe he comes back, he comes back from this in you know, he's he's, he's resting his body now, lost the hangman page, comes back, does another year at AEW, and then says to Khan, you know what? I think I've done everything I've uh, I've had to do here in AEW, and I just want to like fulfill. I want to I want to tick every box in my wrestling list of doing New Japan, do, becoming a major champion in these. Be and I think it's time for me to do maybe three years in WWE and mm. see if I can be a champion. Do you think they will sign him? Firstly, I think 
he maybe maybe not so much now, but at least a couple years ago, he wanted to go to WWE. A one hundred percent. I think the issue probably is the lack of creative control. I think the issue is probably the length of contract that WWE would have to offer him to make it worth their while so they can make their money back on their investment. I think three years for someone like the Bucks when they were offered their contract back in 2017, I think it was, or 18, um, Kenny Omega, three years is far too long because they need to be able to get out when shit doesn't go right. Because this is WWE. Shit's not going to go right at some point. Something's going to mess up. They're going to start using you as a joke. Um... I think he needs a shorter contract. And I think for Kenny Omega, definitely, maybe not so much the Bucks or Cody or whomsoever, but I think for Kenny Omega, it's definitely an option if a shorter contract and some type of percentage of creative control is is spoken about. Hmm. I still think it's an option. He will get WrestleMania. I don't think they'll give him any creative control. Yeah, that's the thing. I understand you mashed the wax elsewhere, but you're Mm. here now. Mm. (laughs) That's absolutely right. Yeah, you're going to start from the bottom. All right. Well, before we sign off, phase, we want to do a, a little game with you. This is the first time we're doing this on the kicker, which is quite strange because it's quite a simple game. It's called Your Favourite Things, phase. Um, mm-hmm. Mex and I will take turns and we're going to mention certain things, you know, that you might be a favourite of or you might like. And you just tell us your answer. So I'll start off easy. Your favourite wrestler? Brett, the Hitman Heart. Max, your go. SmackDown or Raw, your favourite? Team SmackDown. Your favourite pay-per-view? Oh, it's got to be Mania, man. Mania. It has to be Mania, isn't it? Well, let me not, you know. I mean... Roy Rumble has a, has a good shout. Roy Rumble to be controversial, <laughs> but let's tell the truth, it's Mania. No, you're <laughs> right, you're right. You're definitely right. It is Mania. <laughs> Um, favorite match stipulation. Oh, match stipulation. That's a good question, you know. Do you know what? I'm not a huge fan of like Hell in a Cell, TLCs. There's n- not really two. I'm going with a normal, a regular one, match. That's one on one. Match. One on one. <laughs> one, on one. You, know, you don't face, you don't face me. I don't face does what I do. And it's you watch a classic. One on one singles bout, Brett Owen, WrestleMania Come on, 10. Bro. Come on, man. Because, and, and then even like, the, that, like even the stipulation matches, when I think of like stipulation matches, I think of like Attitude Era. I'm thinking Sean Taker. I'm thinking yeah. Sean Mankind. I'm thinking yeah. the Bury buried Alive matches, like yeah. 90s. The, these stipula- stipulation matches now, they don't mean anything. You do Hell in the Cells every other week. You do exactly ladder matches. I mean, it's, they're good, but they're. It, you know, I don't feel the same. So a reg- regular match for me. Favourite tag team? Oh, man. You know what? Guy and Steiner Brothers. Come on. That's <laughs> a good answer. Shut up. No, nah, Faze, you're my... No, nah, Faze, you're my brother. And this is crazy. Steiner Brothers. You mentioned Steiner my favourite wrestler and you mentioned my favourite tag team. The Steiner Brothers, bro! Steiner Brothers were ahead of their time. Don't get me understand, gassed. I understand, I understand what Road Warriors done. I understand what Legion of Doom done. But for me, that's like comparing Warrior and Hogan to Brett and Sean. Exactly. 100%. Yeah. 100. The Steiner brothers, as wrestlers, I, I've never seen anyone mash work like them, man. Their mind was different. Different. And, that's, and, that's, and this one thing, you know they're good when you're clocking them from when you're a kid. Like exactly. you watch them now, you watch them, you watch how they're wrestling and Compared to the other man, you're like, oh, these these lot are just doing different, different stuff. But even when you're a kid and you're clocking it, you know they're special. One hundred percent. Okay. When I'm seeing yeah, doing, when I'm seeing them do a Frankenstein, uh, when everyone's doing like <laughs> fucking arm drags and <laughs> <laughs> and their belly to bellies as well, bro. Their belly to belly suplexes. Oh, insane. Crazy, crazy, insane. Crazy, crazy. Go ahead, Max. Your turn. Um, your favorite women's wrestler today? Today. Do you know, I love. I do love Bianca. I was onto Bianca early from NXT. I was like, this chick is, mm. she's hard. I like Bianca and I like Bailey. I really like Bailey as well. Bailey's yeah, cool. I think she's Bailey. underrated. She is underrated. She's she's definitely underrated. I mean uh, the, the 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 WWE roster, the women they have. The, Charlotte 
for me is the the best. She's the best, but I've gone off her. Mm-hmm. For me, Charlotte was was. For me, she was levels above everyone else, but something's not right right now, and I feel like the fans can see it. So um, I'm going. Be I, I said this to you, did I skill it? <laughs> yeah, you called that. Been, you that early. I've been seeing it. I've been seeing it on Charlotte, and Charlotte was my favorite. But I was seeing that. I think she believes her own hype. You know. I, yeah, I just man. think she's done with them. They've they've got rid of her her husband, her fiance. They got rid of her dad. I think she's done with them. Like, what can they give her more? More titles? Okay. Like, yeah, she's just true. bored over there. She she knows she can run rough shot. They, she knows they need her. Yeah. AEW. Yeah. yeah I let think, her, let I her think drink that's shit, a problem. Maybe. I think they have mm. a problem when they have to Charlotte. Yeah, I think you're right. Um, your favorite wrestling angle, like storyline. Mm. It's got to be Brett Sean. Really? Well, I mean, it's not really an angle. It's real life. It's real. Life. It was actually. Real. It was definitely. <laughs> it wasn't real life. even an angle. It was real. <laughs> real. It was real. real. That man was saying madness to each other. What's your lot? I know a lot of people say like Macho, Hogan, Elizabeth, but I honestly don't give a shit about that. But but, but what's your lot's favorite? I, I, I loved, I loved, I loved Macho Hogan. I loved Macho Flair from the '92. I loved Macho Jake the Snake. That was classic. Um, but I think Austin Rock for me is the best wrestling. The promo, that, the, the the feud, that whole the pack, Austin the package, Rock, the video package. Rock, yeah, like, but it's uh, like, I even changed, from like, I changed my answer, I changed my answer, I'm going to do it's Austin, it's Austin <laughs> Rock. Yeah, because because I feel like even when they were feuding for the IC belt all the way to 2003, like that whole 97, 98, all the way to 2003, that whole stretch of every storyline they did together, it was so entertaining. They were so head and shoulders above everybody else in terms of making you watch a story. Um the Rock promos, Austin, Rock and Austin, both of their promos against each other at WrestleMania 15 build was insane. They were outdoing each other with promos. And obviously you had that epic moment in, two, in uh, WrestleMania 17, you know, with the, uh, like you just mentioned, with the Limp Biscuit, um My, my way. way. I mean, that whole thing was incredible. That Them two. That's I think, really yeah, I think. Package. How about you? What's your, um... um... If I'm not to pick Austin and and Sto- and um, Rock, which I was going to, I think I'd pick Lesnar and Kurt Angle. Really? Yeah, yeah that was good. Stuff that was they good. did in 2002 and stuff, 2003. I, yeah, that 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 what was, was a good time what for was me. The angle, I know the matches were. Is when 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 Angle was champion and he had Team Angle around him and Lesnar was doing all he could to get the belt off him and okay. um, and he had like then, so many and he had so many different types of matches, right? Yeah, like yeah. Iron yeah. Man match. They had this kind of match, and there was one time where he the, Angle repeated that storyline he did with Taker with the brother just about yeah with his Eric yeah. Angle the came out the brother yeah, yeah the roll up um <laughs> and then obviously we had the, the WrestleMania match with the shooting star press that went wrong yeah um, yeah I just think I, that's a fond memory of my my wrestling childhood them two yeah. So, yeah who was the agent that told Brock to do that you don't know oh I don't you know I don't I you know no because apparently just before that's what they say. It, yeah, might yeah, have, yeah. it might have been I don't want to like say it's Bruce Pritchard but it might have been Bruce Pritchard you know or if, if it wasn't Bruce Pritchard somebody else that was working with Bruce Pritchard had told him and Bruce Pritchard was saying no don't do it it might have been Kevin Dunn you know it might have been Kevin Maybe. Dunn but I'm not sure yeah, Brock's, I can't remember Brock's another one that's insanely underrated people are oh, wildly underrated yeah people would just hate on him they hate on him for no reason but because he, does, because he shows up now and then and and i'm sorry i think that's the best way to book him why would you want to see brock lesnar week in week out you need to yeah. see him special occasions and i personally i know a lot of people didn't agree with this when he beat taker i fucking marked out blood there was something <laughs> different it was i didn't see it i didn't see it coming at all i thought taker's yeah. gonna win this and when he beat taker i lost my shit I just the, the, only, the only thing with that, and Taker said this, um, he said it shouldn't have been Brock, it should have been Roman. Because at that time, Roman was the guy they're trying to get over. Roman was the guy that should have absorbed all of that power. And hence why they done it a couple of years later and Roman pinned him. Um, 
Yeah, I, I I disagree though. I feel like Brock is the only man that should have done that because if you yeah, look what Brock, I agree, went yeah. on, what Brock went on to do when he destroyed Cena at SummerSlam and started killing everyone, yeah. exactly. Brock was already made, but it did elevate into a whole next, one hundred whole next, yeah. You know? Yeah, like, and it was it's, it's just logical booking as well. We all know he's a bad man in real life. He would definitely spank taken a real fight. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So let's like let's go with it, innit? it? Like, come yeah. on, man. Like, um, and, any more questions before we wrap up, Max? Favorite faction? Yes, I like this. Oh, favorite faction? Ministry. Really? Ministry, you know? Hundred percent. Were you a, when... were you a Taker kid? Were you into? Were you? Did you love Taker? All I know, yeah, is Ministry times. The stuff that Taker was keeping up <laughs> with, with like fifteen men around him. Mad thing, he's yeah. Got the boss, he's got Shane. He's got Midian, he's got Viscera, he's sacrificing people, kidnapping people. Where to? He's keeping up the most <laughs> rotten stuff. I said, yo, this man, he's he's doing, he's moving, he's moving different. Just he go. was definitely moving different. I remember when you had the, that, he was, was going to sacrifice Stone Cold with the Stone knife. Cold. And the blade, and he's picking in the, tongue um, and shit. And yeah, I remember the teddy bear. He had Vince, yeah. Steph's teddy bear. Yeah. Um, yeah, he's setting it on fire. And then it turned out that Vince was the higher power. Yeah, that's storytelling. It was that's very awesome. storytelling. It was very yeah. all along, when, all when stories meant something in WWE. Yeah, okay. um, ministry. How about you, lot? I think NWO for me. Even though, even though NWO went crazy towards the end, like that first two years of NWO was just. You want to talk about booking? Brilliant booking. I and I and I got. A, I got a love a, a big soft spot for the horseman. I love the horseman as well, but I think I'm gonna go with NWO. <sighs> I've got so many answers to this question. I've got at least four favorites right now. Roll um, them off, roll them off. NWO for sure. Obviously, on the other channel, it was DX. Um, and I would yeah, say from, from face, I thought you were gonna say DX, you know, face. I know you love DX. I mean, the impact of DX was was massive, but the the thing the things that stays with me about ministry was I was watching because here's another thing that <laughs> a lot of um, American viewers might not understand when you're like 13 14 and you're sneaking down at 1 a.m. to watch pay per views <laughs> facts that finish facts finish at 5 a.m. these times facts. I remember pay per views were on Channel Four Royal Rumbles on Channel Four yeah facts. yeah you're 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 sneaking down to watch a pay per view. These times pay per views are eighteen, yeah. So, um, for example, I remember um, the the street fight Cactus Jack Triple H, brilliant match, one of the best. Yes. So when you're watching these matches at like five a.m. and then you're going to school on two a.m., you're kind of you're you're watching pay per views in a different space. So when you're seeing these blood, you're seeing like blood and farm tax. It's kind of it's sticking with you a bit more. And I, what I remember is ministry, seeing those kind of, seeing the stuff that Taker was doing, it was kind of like, not scaring me, but I, I was I, I was affected by it. Mm. You know, DX was big. It was a big, you know, boom. But it didn't it didn't affect me like that. And that's what I look but, for in wrestling. Stuff you know that what, moves me. You know what, Face? Because you just said that. You just brought back so much memories. And I, I wonder, did, did you guys get the same thing I used to get where... You used to be so excited for a pay per view to start, and you used to get—I don't know what it was like butterflies. You used to get little butterflies, and you get a little bit excited, and you put the VHS <laughs> tape in, and you record it. I used to record all the pay per views, and I used to, and, and, and like you said, it's sneaking down because I wasn't—you know—my mom and dad was like, "Go to bed." You got work, mm. you got school in the morning, and I used to sneak out, sneak downstairs, and quietly put a pay per view on and watch it, and put the duvet on and lay down and watch it. And obviously, get caught out in the morning, but. Yeah, no, it just, you, just, you just remind me of all that time. Sorry, um, let's go back to your faction, please. Sorry. Um, yeah, so I said NWO, I said DX. Um, current day, I love the the elite, the Bullet Club stuff. Um, yeah. Undisputed Era were brilliant. Um, and I low-key in my top, top factions, Evolution. Evolution is a mist. I, I, so many people don't like it. But I absolutely love the Reign of Terror. I <laughs> absolutely love Triple H. Like I'm, a, I'm a Triple H guy anyway. But yeah, that was my thing. The Triple Reign of H is, I feel like he's, he's probably like one of the best heels ever. But he doesn't get his ratings. 
Yeah, no, he is definitely one of the best heels ever. One hundred percent. Because people don't like him for yeah, but yeah, you're right. Um, uh, yeah. Uh, l- last one now. I'll ask you, Faze. Your favorite wrestling theme song. Oh, there's a lot, man. There's a lot, a lot of good themes. I always love Shane McMahon. Here comes the money. Here comes the money. <laughs> Here, comes the money. Um, Here comes the money. Favorite. These are difficult questions, you know. <laughs> mine. Um. There's a lot, man. Ultimate Warriors, you know. Room shaker, shake the room. Stone Cold, Crazy. shake the room. Yeah, man. Definitely. Um, yeah, probably them ones, man. You know. Stone oh, Cold, and I ask you, and I ask you one more as well. If you if you were to, if you say if in another multiverse, Phase One is a wrestler, and you've trained to be a wrestler for a little while, what would be your finishing move? See, you think as a wrestling fan that I'd have these off top? I, I really don't. Well, it's not easy though, but it's never it's easy. easy. It's, it's true. not. It's not. It's never easy. Um, what would be my finisher? I want to pop something. You know, something I can pop off quickly. <laughs> I'm flirting with RKO, but I know there's better ones out there. Um, a, I can pop off quick. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I hear you. I hear you. So impact, did it? The impact one. Yeah, let's say. Um, you know what, Sister Abigail, what okay. a move! That is what a move. a move! That is a move. That what a move. move! Um, and it's 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 not what you do; it's how you do it. Like I always yeah. thought, Hogan's leg drop, it shouldn't it shouldn't be a finishing move, but the way Hogan drops that leg, it's like. It's, it's done like when Hogan drops that leg. It's done. It, <laughs> like, feels, like a, over. it feels like a finisher. Mm. Yeah, it feels like a finisher. Um, yeah, man, sister Abigail. Okay, well, thank you so much for joining us, Faze. Um, you it's are always pleasure. welcome, <laughs> brother. You're always welcome back on the pod. Um, one day we should do one in person as well. We'll do one in the studio together. Max and I are going to be trying to be doing some new material in the new year, so we'll invite you as a guest probably do some like watch along stuff and whatever we'll let you guys yeah. know we'll let you know um but can you please uh plug yourself one last more one more time promote yourself let people know where they can find you if anyone has loved what you had to say today yo the instas wwf plug that's for the merchandise if you need that good vintage that real vintage that's been sourced you know past decade out here wwf plug the website's wwfts and on my personals it's phase what p-h-a-z-e W H A T, shout out to man them now. It's been good chopping it up with you. Yeah, yeah man. You Thank too. you, and, um, Yeah, man. Rest in peace, New Jack, the realist. One hundred percent. Thank yeah. you so much for your time, my brother. Max, we out. Oh. We out. We okay. out.